what is up guys and of course welcome to another top 10 video from yours truly the Skyrender. and today i have a very different video and something that i want to create for quite some time but i haven't really found a way to narrow it down to a top 10 and even now i'm not sure i can pull that off so without further ado today's top 10 is about top 10 pokemons in weathers or rather weather sweepers so with that said we're gonna have a small disclaimer of course pokemon that are gaining defensively uh, from the weather such as for example mega scissor will not be included the mon itself need to be in some fashion boosted also as a second note is that the ones that set up the potential weather such as Charizard Y, Ninetales, Hippowdon, Tyranitar and Politoed is not included in this list anyway uh, even if they are required for the teams, of course, these mods work properly. I can't uh, ignite them to the teams itself or the top 10 itself because they are just the setter, they are just the fuse, they are not a blast. And I'm gonna show you the top 10 blasts in Withers. Coming in at number 10 is Beatic. It should be noted there were a lot of mods that could make this list that didn't do it. Beatic barely made it because of it. it's the only one with the ice typing. Uh, it is really nice mon obviously. It has a 110 base attack in combination with a very very broad move pool, the likes of Icicle Crash of course, Ice Punch for his stabs. And then we have the priority move of Aqua Jet and Play Rough, Night Slash and Shoot Superpower. So in of course Rain it can maintain itself really well. Now it's not the fastest one, 50 base speed only makes sure that you can beat 110 months in rain which is good to know but at the same time it is also an issue but other than that it is actually worth checking out it actually isn't that bad but it definitely needs extra speed to maintain yourself really nicely and of course the high icicle crash it misses is always an issue but outside of that Beartic is rather formidable and it's highly recommended to use in the actually higher standard plays if you can pull the rain team off nicely but with that said, let's go into our number 9 pick. Coming in at number 9, Gigalith. Now, Gigalith for me is a really, really nostalgic mod because I really like this mod as it is. It is a, it's a soul rock type, which is both a blessing and a curse, but it is mostly for the better. Being have, having the likes of Sturdy behind it, which is really unnecessary due to its single type, it also has the likes of Sand Force, which I believe or think is superior ability for it. With Sand Force, you get a 33% boost to rock, ground and steel base attacks in the sand. Plus, with the extra special defenses of that, 80 special defense now becoming 80 special defense plus 50% basically, which makes this mod really, really, really nice. In combination with its shared amount of bulk and very, very high attack, it can maintain itself really nicely. Now, it has a low speed, it should be noticed, but with that defenses, you don't really need to care about that. And of course, one of the more required sets that I use is the one with Assault Vest, which I believe works really well in combination with Stone Edge. It can take hits, and the retaliation is just beyond mean. It is one of the better mods I know about when it comes to Sand Team, and I really recommend that standard play. And that is why it is number 9 on this list. Coming in at, of course, number 8 is Lodi Colo. And why wouldn't it be here? Lodi Colo is really, really, really cool. And outside of that, its typing makes it actually really good. It is a very, very alone grass water type, which makes sure that it doesn't hit, get hit super effectively by likes of Thunder or, uh, or Electric Moves, sorry, Electric Move, and of course, Grass Moves, which makes it really good in the rain. And it only has, of course, issues with the likes of bug types and flying, which is unfortunate, but at the same time, it has a really, really good base defenses in combination with decent speed and decent special attack. Now, it has an okay attack, but I wouldn't recommend anybody using that, but it has a very, very good move pool, of course. Giga Drain, Energy Ball, Scald, Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, which are all excellent moves when it comes to the meta. Now, it can deal with a lot of things, and in the rain, it doesn't really care about a whole lot because its sheer amount of speed makes sure it hurts a lot. Now, one could hope that it had a bigger special attack and could boost itself, sadly which it can't, but outside of that, it can really pack a punch if it has the right kind of environment and the right moveset 
to maintain yourself in the rain. So I highly recommend this mod in OU if you have a chance to. It's not half bad, it just needs the range support to hurt enough. Coming in at number 7 is Stoutland. And yeah, with a channel name like Scarender, with of course a Stoutland for a logo type, one would believe that Stoutland would be a lot higher, but I can't deny that there are a lot of other weather sweepers which are slightly better, but with that said, Stoutland is still very, very formidable. If not only because of its extremely good attack stat, of course 110, in combination with a really, really high bulk. What that basically means that is that it doesn't really suffer for taking priority hits such as for a Mac Punch or anything like that. And with Sandrush, that 80 base becomes a real deal. And combine that with, it, of course, its stab return or its broad move pool of superpower, crunch, play rough, and wild charge, it can actually hurt almost anything it faces. Now, it does suffer a bit, and it actually has to rock too much, I forgot about that. Like I said, it suffer a bit because it doesn't have enough usable effective stat, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, there are very few switch and for to remove of return. And with Scrappy, it can probably fool a few guys too. But anyway, Stoutland is definitely my number 7 spot. Coming in at number 6, Heliolisk. Now, Heliolisk is much more interesting because it's either a rain-based mod with dry skin, or a solar-powered mod with, of course, sun behind it. Now, solar power is an extremely good ability, being that it works as a specs for it. And combine solar power with specs, you you got a pretty big deal to deal with, basically. But I prefer, of course, the dry skin, mostly because I make sure that you can use life for with very, very little ramification. Here's the thing with, of course, your list. It's not the most specially oriented mod when it comes to special attack. It's not the highest. It's not the most speediest mod, definitely isn't. But its move pool is up there. With a like of Hyper Voice, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Thunder, at the worst case, with, of course, the rain behind it. And you got Dark Pools, we got Grass Knot, and, of course, Surf. There are very, very few things that could come in safety on a healer disc, and in combination with its abilities, make sure that it's really, really, really tough to deal with. I myself really like healer disc, I think it's easy to build a team around it, and like I said, with dry skin, you can pack a life orb behind it, and you don't have to worry about residual damage for dry skin or for life orb because you recover it with your dry skin. So, healer disc, one of the top picks when it comes to rain team, it's really nice to use. At my number five spot, I have Victory Bell. Now this is probably the, the one that made it highest out of my old picks. It was either actually Victory Bell or Venusaur. I did decide to go for Victory Bell for one reason. Weather Ball. That is what it all comes down to. Victory Bell, not the broadest move pool. It is definitely limited by the folds and it's not really a force to be reckoned with. But in the right environment, it just get access to, of course, Growth. Which boosts its already massive special attack and attack stat to the double, which is extremely dangerous, and combine that with grass, poison, good stabs with weather ball, which of course hurts a lot with a 100 fire base attack move, and of course, if you wanted to, utilize itself a sucker punch. Victor Bell is just up there, it's so dangerous, it's so forceful when it comes to this kind of environment that I just can't get enough of it, and it's 70 base, much like Lodicolo, it's enough to outspeed the things that matter, and if things you can't outspeed, you can always sucker punch. I can't tell you guys how many things, situations I've seen where Elka Sam is trying to take this guy on only to be retaliated with a sucker punch. It is a oh, seeing that emotion. So Victor Bell gets the higher voice, but like I said, Venusaur was it was either him or Venusaur. I do believe Victor Bell is slightly better due to the weather ball, basically. At number four, we have Cabotops. And sadly, I couldn't make this picture better, but this picture is just awesome. I couldn't, I couldn't resist using it. With that said, Cabotops is one of the top tier rain sweepers. And it, the worst thing is, it doesn't necessarily need rain to work properly anyway. But its main perk is that with rain, you don't have to worry about the speed that much. Now, 80 base is really, really respectable, much like Stoutland actually. But what makes this a slightly better mount is its sheer amount of power, 115 base attack people, in combination with rock water type and priority of course aqua jet, 
there are very few things that can deal with this properly and combine that with one of the worst things that can happen this thing can set up sword stance and you don't like i said you don't really need anything else outside of rock and water typing to actually cover yourself if you wanted to it has actually the low kick which makes sure that a lot of months fall really 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 hard i myself really like cabbie tops it's probably one of the bigger niches when it comes to ou but by god can it hold its own and with very very little issues so yeah and of course rapid spin is always a thing could be useful definitely but for me it's all about power and cabbie tops represent just that Coming in at number 3, Mega Houndoom. And he is easily what I would reconsider the strongest Sun Pokemon available. Why you ask? Solar Power. As I stated with Hillisk, Solar Power is a Specs boost to your special attack and without using Specs. Why that's a big deal when it comes to Houndoom is of course of one single reason. 140 special attack. There is just undeniable how strong this mon really is and combine it with his great amount of bulk and a very niche speed tier, you are very likely to outspeed anything you are facing and with of course the solar power and the sun boost, you won't be needing nasty plot and there is very few reasons for you to actually set up a nasty plot, broaden that move pool anyway because you got access to flamethrower, fire blast, solar beam, yes freaking solar beam dog pulse and sludge bomb and of course combine it with of course sucker punch for priority now sucker punch of course with houndoom is real nice due to that niche speed here of course 115 you are very likely to go first so houndoom like i said is easily my top pick for the strongest sun pokemon in this meta without a doubt and at number two we have what i believe is the strongest Rain Sweeper. Yes, that is not a Mega Swampert. That is THE Kingdra. Now, one would have to ask, why is Kingdra such a big deal? Well, it's fast enough to pull a Rain Sweep single-handedly. It has better stabs to use specs without any ramification. And combine that with probably what is the worst about this is Draco Meteors. It comes down to that Kingdra is so good, it's so balanced, that it's just sheer amount of danger that it represents, it's just beyond me. I myself really like to use Kingdra when it comes to uh, rain based team, and let's just say that it is. Kingdra is the easiest mon to utilize itself with, of course, the Swift Swim. There are so few mons to take it on single handedly, and it's just a spammer. Specs spamming it's what it does best and with Swift Swim and 85 base speed it makes sure that you don't ever need to worry about anything out speeding you it is highly unlikely and like I said the stabs make sure it hurts a lot and in the rain of course Hydro Pump hurts for real this time and like I said Mega Swampert was in this dialogue too but Kingdra just takes the cake because it's just so powerful and before going into, of course, our number one pick, I'm going to mention, of course, our honorable mentions when it comes to this. And as you guys see, these are the five mods that we're settling for, of course, the number 10 spot. Now, I decided to make this list a bit more unique, which made me actually force a few cuts. Toxicroak didn't make it for obvious reasons. One is, it doesn't necessarily get enough of boost when it comes to dry skin. While it's nice, it is just not that nice. Venusaur, like I said, it was competitive for Victory Bell spot, to be honest. I feel that they represent too much of the same thing, that's why he didn't make it. Uh, then with Mega Garchomp, I do believe, as always, that Mega Garchomp, while it's really really good in Sand Force, it is not as good as his little brother, which of course being a regular Garchomp, being in my regards vastly superior to its typing. It's just, we can't deny that fact, it just, it's impossible. But with that said, Mega Garchomp is still a very very formidable, it just didn't bring more to what Garchomp probably should have been. Next one of course, Mega Swampert. And like I mentioned before, uh, I think Kingdra is the better one when it comes to this. Mega Swampert, while it is extremely good, it doesn't necessarily need rain to work properly, to be honest. It's dangerous in rain, but not. it's still dangerous without it. And it just didn't get enough um, utilities to make itself void off, of course, its potential checks and counters. So with that said, 
uh, it just didn't it didn't really bring more to what it was probably needed. Now it is a stronger mon, but there's where it all ends. It's just Ice Punch doesn't sell anything. 115 base doesn't really help it that much, and that's why didn't make it. And of course, our last is Sand Slash. Now the reason Sand Slash didn't make it is because it has a steep, steep competition, and that is. Most likely because it was overtaken by our number one spot, being of course the Excadrill. And really, why else can I say more than Excadrill? Easily the best sweeper in the weather, without a doubt in my mind. And of course, Sandrush made this thing a big deal. And of course, why that's a big deal? It is naturally rather fast with 88 base speed, make sure to actually outspeed the general meta as it is anyway. And of course, combine it with probably the best thing is 135 attack. Yeah, that's a deal. Like that there is really nothing we can say here more than that is going to hurt every time. And of course, it got access of Sand Force, which boosts this, of course. It's already stabs and, of course, rock type moves. So you can actually utilize the speed itself, being more likely to just hit. Use the sand anyway for just the extra power, of course, for the free run boost to that already staggering high attack. Now, here's the thing you already have Earthquake, you already have Iron Head. It also gets access to the like of Rock Slide, Excessor, and probably worst thing, Sword Stance. And, of course, it can spin. It's just a complete set. It is a spinner, it is a sweeper, and it is a wall breaker. There are a lot of things this thing can do very, very, very good. Now, it's not bulky, but that's the thing. That is what Sand Slash was. The result of that is NU. The result of extra power and speed, OU. That, that's it. And of course, Steel helps. Yes, it's a great stab to have. That's not the reason it was here in the first place. This thing was Uber in Generation 5 because of its spam of its great ground earthquake, but Arnett, like I said, it does help, it is a good filler, and it really, really makes sure that this mon is just the perfect beast in a sand condition. Like I said, it is my number one pick, because it's just that good. It has no competition that is near this good. Excadrill just exceeds when it comes to top, top sweepers in a weather condition. So alright, that's the video guys. As always, of course, make sure to leave a like and stuff like that. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, just to have that out of the way. Other than that, I really just want to tell you guys, if you have any other thoughts, make sure to write that down below. Like I said here, I did actually limit this list quite a lot, because I ended up with having a list of 50 Pokemons, and there was no way I was going to do a top 50 uh, <laughs> Pokemon in a uh, different weather condition. I could limit myself to, of course, being very, very much specific, but I really wanted to make a list and pretty much give the line to the mons to deserve it. And I think I did here because I went out quite a niche. I did avoid a few mons. And like I said, I did avoid actually having that defensive response. Like Mega Sister was definitely, I think, top three. But as it doesn't really gain a lot of, of perks in the rain outside of being more defensive and being used more safely. But other than that, it didn't really add anything to the mons. So that, due to that reason, I started to actually pick Asunder this whole list and it, i think it ended up really nicely uh, but anyway guys thank you as always for watching and like i said if you have any different thoughts or want to share something post it down below i'm gladly read it and until next time guys thank you so much for watching and i see you in the next video until then take care bye